morning. It is Sunday morning and Sunday morning means I am making bagels. I pretty much religiously, haha, <laughs> Sunday morning. Okay, let's not say that. <laughs> Today we are talking bagels. Um, it's Sunday, it's about 9.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning and I pretty much always make bagels on Sunday. Today I'm actually just gonna make one batch of bagels. Normally I make two, normally I make um, everything bagels and onion dill bagels, but today I am actually gonna make rosemary olive oil bagels. Number one, because I don't have any poppy seeds and kinda gotta have poppy seeds to make everything bagels. And number two, I only have enough bread flour on hand right now to make one batch of bagels. So we're gonna have to suck it up with one batch for this week, so that's okay. So what I wanna talk about first is what it takes to make a base batch of plain bagels because that is the foundation for any other bagel recipe. Um, you always start with a plain bagel recipe and then if you wanna make some other variety, whether it be adding toppings or adding things into your batter, then you always build that on top of this base recipe. And honestly, bagels are really, really easy. You just gotta have some patience. There's not even a lot of active time that goes into them. It's mostly just patience. So without further ado, here's what you need. This is three and a half cups of bread flour. Now bread flour is very important here. Um, pretty much in any baking recipe, the type of flour that you use is important. If you're making a cake and your particular recipe calls for cake flour, you probably don't want to substitute all-purpose flour. You probably actually want to use cake flour because it will dr pretty drastically change the texture of your cake. Um, for baking bread and bagels and you know other types of doughs like pizza dough and whatnot, bread flour has more gluten in it. So gluten is a protein that is what gives your bread a dense, chewy texture. And that is especially important in bagels. If you're looking for that New York style, dense, chewy mouthfeel, you do not want to try to substitute bread flour for all purpose flour or any other type of flour for that matter. Now, there are recipes out there that where you can make whole wheat uh, bagels. They still usually use half and half with half gluten, high gluten and half whole wheat. The next and most important ingredient is your yeast. Obviously, yeast is the thing that uh, makes your bread rise. So if you don't have this, um, and if it's not fresh, and if it's not the right type, you are going to have problems uh, getting your bread to rise. For this recipe, I actually prefer quick rise yeast. You may sometimes see it called um, bread machine yeast, which in fact, I think that's, this one does say quick rise yeast for bread machines. Um, it does rise a little faster. I actually, which when we get to this, you'll see what I'm talking about, we cold ferment this recipe. So it actually does most of its flavor developing in the refrigerator. So this is what I prefer for this recipe. Your three other ingredients um, is water. You're gonna use a little bit of kosher salt and honey. Just plain old, any type of honey that you wanna use. Um, I do recommend that you have a stand mixer for this. If you don't, you will have to knead this by hand. I, don't, I mean, you're not gonna be able to do this with a handheld mixer, that's just not going to work. So you can knead your bread by hand. It, it's just a little harder. You're gonna get a good workout from it, a good upper body workout from it. If you have a stand mixer, um, I highly recommend it. If you're gonna use a stand mixer, you have to have this attachment. This is a bread hook. Um, it is specifically for making bread dough. So. Use this with your stand mixer and you will be very happy. Aside from that, you just need a whisk and a teaspoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the base recipe and then we will mix in our add-ins for our rosemary olive oil. So, to start, here I have one and a quarter cups of water. That is the minimum amount of water I have ever needed. This is usually not enough water. Usually I will have to add a little bit of water, a little bit of water during the mixing phase to fully hydrate my flour. But if it's a very, very humid day outside or it's very humid in your kitchen, this may be enough water. So I would recommend always starting with one and a quarter cups of water and 
adding more later if you need to because it seriously just depends on the weather. Oh, and by the way, this water is about room temperature. It is just tap water. Um, and I let it get hot and then I turned it down to where it was just kind of um, room temp, I guess. Probably about 80 degrees. It's not, not very hot at all, but it's also not cold straight out of the tap. So first thing we're gonna do is add one teaspoon of yeast to our water. And then we are going to add one and a half teaspoons. Actually, I'm gonna add about two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of kosher salt. I don't measure this. I usually add between one and a half to two tablespoons. I just really give it a good squeeze, to be honest. And I really need to buy some more honey because I'm just about out. I'm gonna let that get down to the bottom. And one, two, three. That's seriously how I usually measure out my honey. I count to three. All right, we're gonna give this a good whisk. And that's it. Now if you were making just plain old bagels, this is all you need. All you would do is take your water that you just mixed up with your yeast and honey and salt, pour it right into your flour and get to mixing. But I don't typically make plain bagels. I'm just not a big fan of them. I usually like some kind of savory bagel. So like I said, today we're doing rosemary and olive oil. So for that, I have probably about a tablespoon of fresh rosemary. I just pulled this out of my garden this morning and chopped it up. Um, and a tablespoon of olive oil. Usually when I am mixing in add-ins, I use one to one and a half tablespoons of each add-in. And if you're gonna mix in olive oil to your batch, I would not recommend going over a tablespoon because it can change the texture uh, and change how it bakes up. So I wouldn't put more than a tablespoon of olive oil in any batch of bagels. I'm just gonna add my olive oil right into my liquids and it's gonna kinda sit on top. Give that a whisk. It's really not gonna whisk in all that well. It doesn't really matter. And then your dry ingredients, your herbs, spices, whatever you're using in your bagels go right in your flour. And before putting this in the stand mixer and before adding our liquid, I, you actually want to whisk in those dry spices or herbs to get them evenly incorporated. Give this one last whisk to get any of those yeast granules off the bottom of the cup and then right into the water, into the flour we go. Okay, get your bowl locked on and get your dough hook on and we're going to turn this on to the lowest setting and we're going to let it run for three minutes. Okay, I hope you can hear me over this thing, but this is important. During the first three minutes of mixing is when you're going to need to look for whether or not you need to add any additional water. So what I do is I take my measuring cup, I just, add, just put some water in, just some tap water, doesn't matter what temperature, and just have it ready to start dribbling into the bowl. Um, I usually wait until we're about a minute and a half into that first three minutes to let the water that's already in there get fully incorporated, and that gives me a good idea if I'm gonna need to add any more water or not. We're about a minute and 30 seconds into mixing, so you can see it's really kind of like, um, stringy and flaky looking in there. Let's see what you're Oops, wrong way. You see how it's like, oh, it's kind of hard to see, but it's crumbly and stringy, and that's not what we want. That's definitely, there's also some dry bits of flour down in the bottom of the bowl. So we definitely don't have enough water in there. So I'm gonna just, literally just a couple of drops at a time. <laughs> you will be amazed at how quickly you will reach the perfect consistency. So a little bit at a time, and you can see it's starting to um, pull away from the sides of the bowl, which is exactly what we want. We don't want any dough sticking to the sides of the bowl. Okay, we're looking really good now. We got about 15 seconds left. All right, there goes my timer. Oh, that's perfect. 
Okay, so we're gonna drop the bowl. And what you're looking for, I'm gonna push all of this down to the bottom because that that's on top is really wet and that's, a, that's on the bottom is a little drier. So what you're looking for is that there should be no dough sticking to the side of the bowl. It should be all in one big ball. Um, and when you touch it, it should have a little give like, you know, a dough would, but it should not stick to your finger, which this doesn't. It shouldn't feel sticky at all. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let this, we're going to let this sit for five minutes. Gluten needs a chance to rest in between kneading because once it gets overworked, it actually starts shrinking back. Um, it's like a, you know, a hot rubber band and it shrinks back whenever it gets overworked. So we want to let it rest for about five minutes and then we're going to use our mixer again to knead it for another three. So we'll be back in five minutes. Okay, it has been five minutes of resting for this dough. So we are going to just bring the bowl back up and put it back on the lowest setting and we're going to let it go for another three minutes and then we'll come back and hand knead it for about 10 seconds. All right, we have been kneading for the final three minutes. So we're gonna turn this off, drop the bowl. Just go ahead and take the whole thing out. So I'd like to give it one last final knead by hand and then we will cover it up and let it sit and rise a little bit in room temperature. Okay. And then I kind of like, now you can see it's a lot more smooth, but I kind of just take it and roll it into a ball where all the seams are on the bottom. That's where the seams are. Seams are on the bottom. It's nice and smooth on top. And then I'm going to take just some extra virgin olive oil and just really lightly oil my bowl just a little bit and kind of roll it around drop my dough ball in there, and then kind of roll the ball around in that oil to make sure the bottom gets coated in the oil, and that way it won't stick to the bowl as it rises. The sides are pretty well covered too. Just kind of pat that down a little bit, and there we have it. There is our bagel dough. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this in plastic wrap, and we are going to leave this out in room temperature on the counter, covered, you can also just cover this in a towel if you want. So I'm gonna nice and tightly cover this. We're gonna leave this to sit, room temperature on the counter, covered for one hour to rise. And then we will come back and roll them and get them into the refrigerator for cold fermenting. So we will be back in one hour. Okay, we are back and it has been one hour. Our bagel dough has been resting at room temperature. Um, so we're gonna divide them. We're gonna roll them. I'm gonna show you my method for rolling, which is not really the professional way of rolling, but it's how I like to do it. And then we will um, get these on the tray that they're gonna be baked on and get them in the refrigerator for cold fermenting. So, and I just grab it and plop it onto my cutting board. Now I do just eyeball this. But these are just for us. This is just for personal use. If I were gonna be selling bagels, I would definitely get out a kitchen scale and measure so that each of my portions were at least within a couple of grams of each other. But since these bagels are just for me and Chris, I honestly just kinda eyeball it and feel it. Like I can tell this one's a little bit big, so I'm gonna, and that one was a little underweight. So they're about the same size now. A lot of books on bagels and a lot of the professionals use what's called a rope technique. So they essentially, let me get these all out of the way, roll this into a long rope, about that long, and then flip the ends around their hand so they have, you know, um, the ends meeting under their palm and then they roll it across like this to seal it. I actually don't like to do it that way because I always have a problem getting my ends to actually seal and they kind of come undone when I go through the boil phase. So I tend to do it kind of like I would a biscuit. So as you can see, I'm kind of folding all of the ends in on itself to the where all of the edges meet in the middle and that forms a nice 
round, almost like you were making um, dinner rolls. But then I literally, just where all the ends meet, poke my thumb through. I know that's kind of silly, but then I just take my fingers and kind of spread it open, and here's the important part. I spin it, and it kind of stretches it out for me. And there's my, there's my bagel. So let me do that again. So I roll it around in my hand to get it into a round shape. I tuck all of the ends under. It's nice and smooth on top. Poke my finger through, or my thumb through, and spin it. And that's how I do my bagels. So let me move my bowl out of the way. This is just a standard cookie sheet, and I do have a Silpat mat on top. You could also use parchment paper. Um, you definitely want to put something down so that this makes cleanup easier, number one, but it also makes it where you can remove them from the pan easier after they bake. So, like I said, we'll get these in the fridge. They're going to rise a little bit in the fridge, but that's really not the purpose of cold fermenting. Really, the purpose is um, that's where these bagels are going to develop the most of their flavor. It's going to be in the refrigerator. Let's get these covered. Some people like to spritz the top with some baking spray or olive oil spray before covering it, just to help keep the plastic wrap from sticking to the tops of the bagels while they're in the proofing stage, but I don't really seem to have a problem with that, so I, just, I usually just skip that step. We will pop these in the fridge, and you want to let them sit in there at least for eight hours. So that's why I get up and do this on Sunday mornings. Um, it is about 11 a.m. About 7 o'clock, we'll be ready to get these out, 7 p.m., which is just enough time to get them out, let them proof, and get them baked. Um, and then that way they're fresh on Monday morning. Otherwise, you can always do the dough the night before and just let them stay in overnight and get up and make your bagels in the morning. This dough can stay in, in the refrigerator for up to four days, so you can prep this a couple of days in advance if you want. I will say, the longer you let it sit in the fridge, the more trouble you're gonna have with your dough rising nicely in the proofing stage and subsequently through the boil stage cooking properly. The dough seems to get a little looser. I don't really know if there's a better word to describe that, but it seems to get a little looser the longer it sits in the fridge. I have waited several days, I have tried it both ways, but 24 hours seems to be about the max that I'm willing to let mine stay in the fridge before cooking them. So uh, ideally eight hours, that's the minimum and that's, that's about an ideal amount of time to let them rest in the fridge. 24 hours, you can go up to four days, but I personally don't recommend it. So we'll get these in, and we will be back tonight at about seven o'clock to show you how to finish these things off. All right, we are ready to take our bagels out of the refrigerator and start the proofing phase. It's about 7.30, same day. These have been in the refrigerator for about eight and a half hours. Um, and we're going to let them proof for an hour and 15 minutes, room temperature. So as you can see, I'm gonna uncover these. They are hard as a rock right now. Um, I'm just gonna unstick them from the mat. I'll just lay them right back exactly where they were. They didn't rise a whole lot in the refrigerator, but the cold fermenting stage is not for rising, it's for developing flavor, like I was saying earlier. So I'm going to actually throw away one of these pieces and keep one of saran wrap. We're just going to take this piece and just loosely cover on top. We're not going to stick it down or anything. We want, we want it to be loose because now is when these bagels are really going to rise. They're going to spend an hour and 15 minutes out at room temperature and they're going to puff up pretty big. So we want this to stay loose so that as they get bigger this plastic wrap is not holding them down. So we will be back in an hour and 15 minutes. All right, we are back and we are ready to uncover these dudes. As you can see, they have risen quite a bit. Um, they rise a lot in the middle where the hole is, so I don't know if they actually look a lot bigger to you on camera, but they have definitely puffed up a lot and they have filled in a lot and filled out. So, oops. So these have about 15 more minutes of proofing. Uh, but the reason we came back at an hour and 15 minutes is because now is the, when we need to start a pot of water and get our oven preheating. So we're going to set our oven to 450. 
Um, and then we are also going to start, start a pot of water because yes, bagels are boiled. Uh, I think the proper term for it is actually called kettling. So we are going to start a big pot of water. You want it to be a pretty wide mouthed pot so you can fit a few in at one time. Um, if you only have like a deep sauce or a saute pan, that'll work too. You just want to make sure that you have enough water, enough boiling water in the pot that you that the bagels will float on top and that you will be able to flip them. So I'm going to go get that started and then once our water starts boiling, we will be back. All right, water is boiling and we are ready to go. A big, probably a tablespoon of salt. And we're going to add, just like we did with the mixture, we're going to add just a big squeeze of honey, probably about three seconds. And then finally, this is the only other new ingredient that we are adding, baking soda. Add a tablespoon of baking soda. All right, so I usually put three bagels in at one time. Um, we're going to boil them for one minute on the first side, and then we're going to flip them and boil them for 45, 45 more seconds. Okay, that was one minute, so we're just going to flip these. I like to just use a flat spatula, wooden spatula to flip them. And we're going to boil these for on the second side for 45 seconds. We're not going to turn the microwave on. We're going to turn the timer on. I do that all the time. All right, and I like to use a, uh, I don't know what this thing is called, but this is what I like to use to pull my bagels out of the water. All right, and we're just going to repeat that process with the last three bagels. Popping them all in. And one thing to note, if you get to this stage and for some reason your bagels are not floating, then that means they did not proof properly or they did not finish proofing. Um, you can actually do a water test before boiling. If you're just not, if you're just not sure if they're going to be ready to boil yet, just get a small bowl of water, one that will allow it to float, but one that's big enough for just one bagel. Fill it with tap water and plop your bagel in there. If it floats, then they are ready to boil. If it doesn't, you need to put it back on the pan and let them sit out for another, I'd say let it sit out for 20 to 30 minutes. Well, maybe not even that long, maybe 15 to 20 minutes just to continue proofing a little bit and then test it again. But once your bagels are floating, and that is called a float test, that is completely legitimate, um, once your bagels are floating, then they are ready to boil. So you do want to bake these immediately after you get the whole batch out. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven right now. All right, oven is at 450 degrees. It's completely preheated. And we're going to pop these in for... Every oven's a little bit different. Um, I usually have to cook mine for 15 minutes, so I'll have to count on my fingers. <laughs> I can't math in my head. But yeah, so I usually cook mine for... 15 minutes in the oven and I turn them after the first eight minutes. So we'll be back at in eight minutes to show you what they look like midway. And then we'll pop them back in for another seven. That rosemary is just so fragrant. Once these start baking, look how beautiful that is. Like, oh my God. But they're not quite done. They need another seven minutes in my particular oven. So let's set that timer and we will be back when they are finished. Dun, 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 dun. Our bagels are done. Look how amazing those look. I wish you could smell them because they smell divine. I wish that I could cut into one of these right now. But just like any other bread, you do need to let these sit. Ooh, I keep moving my up. Uh, you do need to let these sit out and cool for a good while before you try to slice them. Otherwise, they're just going to be so soft in the middle that you will tear them right up. So I'm going to let these sit out for about 15 minutes, let them cool down, and we will slice one open and I will show you up close and personal what the crumb looks like. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. These are honestly still a little bit too warm to cut, but I don't care because I want to smell them and I want to show them to you. 
Actually, this is cutting pretty good. Oh my goodness. You ready for this? Oh, look at the steam coming up off of it. Look at that crumb. It's dense and you can just tell that's gonna be chewy biting into it. Oh, oh it smells so good, so good. I love the rosemary scent that these give off. So, okay, so the way I cut these, number one, use a serrated bread knife, for sure. This is actually just a cheap knife. I have a whole set of really nice um, global knives because I do a lot of cooking, but I can't even remember where I bought this. I think I bought it on Amazon. What does that even say? Pure Komachi High Carbon Stainless Steel. Pure Komachi 2. And I used this knife. It was really cheap. It was like 15 bucks or something. And I used this knife for all of my bread because it cuts so well. And I actually use this for my cakes too. This is a great knife for that kind of thing. So. I actually kind of cut my bagels like I do cakes. So when you're leveling a cake or torting a cake, rather than sawing through your cake, you actually spin your cake and let that do the work. So I kind of do the same thing with my bagels. I get it started, but then rather than like sawing through and sawing across, I actually like spin the bagel as I go without really moving the knife until I just get all the way through. And sometimes there's like a little piece in the middle that still needs to be cut, but voila. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all six of these. I do go ahead and cut them immediately before freezing them because they will be very difficult to cut frozen. So, okay. Now that we've got all six of those cut, let me show you how I store these. I have one large Ziploc bag, a gallon size freezer bag, and I've got six little sandwich bags. All I do is I bag each one of these bagels individually in a sandwich bag, get out as much air as possible. Now, once you have all six of them bagged, take your gallon size freezer bag, put them all inside, seal it up, and voila, it is ready to go in the freezer. So bagels, they'll fresh bagels will probably start to turn in about three to four days. If you've got a big family and you're going to finish them within three days or so, then you don't even need to bother with this. It'll be fine. But, you know, I usually make a dozen bagels on Sunday and it's just me and my husband. We're not gonna finish those all in three days, obviously. So I always freeze my bagels, always, 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 and I never have any problem double bagging them like this. No freezer burn, no nothing. So the other great thing about doing it this way is that they're super easy to heat up the next day. You actually don't even have to thaw them out. You can pull these directly out of the freezer and pop them right in your toaster and they're good to go. They will heat all the way through and completely toast just like normal. Um, what I normally do, because the two halves will kind of get stuck together, I will pop it in the microwave for 12 seconds. And I know that is really specific, but <laughs> That's just the way I like to do it. I will microwave it for 12 seconds, and then it's just enough for me to get the two halves apart, pop it in the toaster like I would any other bagel, and they are good to go. So that's it. That is all there is to making bagels. I will do another video in the future. Um, for sure we'll do everything bagels, uh, because there is a little bit different technique for making bagels that you're putting toppings on the top. So I would definitely want to do a video in the future to show you that. And we usually make everything bagels. I was just out of poppy seeds this time. So um, that'll be coming up. I'll probably do one on my favorite, my favorite recipe, which is onion dill. Um, and then perhaps I'll try some new ones in the future too, because there's been a couple of recipes that I've been wanting to experiment with to try to clone some of the flavors from some of our favorite bagel shops. So stay tuned for that. There will be videos for that in the future. See you later, everybody. Oh, now feel. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it is, that's the word for it. You just hit my camera.
Shit. I wonder if you can tell that I'm wearing pajamas in this. Does it matter? Huh? You could have your channel called Breakfast in Pajamas. <laughs> I think only if I lift my shirt up can you tell I'm wearing pajamas. <laughs>